Hello all, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at a little comparison between Java and C++. Of course, we're going to start with C++ because that's sort of where we ended um, in the previous section when we compare Go, C and C++. So now we're going to compare C++ and Java, but we're going to write our C++ um, Hello World application slightly differently than how we wrote it in the first um, when we compared to C and Go. And that's because, like I said before, C++ is a multi multi paradigm language. It allows you to write structured program as well as, well as object-oriented programming. And I probably want to go so far as to say as C++ is one of those languages that actually kicked off the whole object-oriented or renewed interest in object-oriented programming because it was object-oriented before from small talk. That's where C++ was inspired. But um, still, when C++ sort of brought back some of those ideas from small talk and so on, then other object created language um, sprang up and jumped back into the fray. And we're going to see, and I'm going to claim that Java is one of those languages that was inspired to be created based on what was happening in, with C++. As we know, when you have a language and you get some attention, um, eventually somebody's going to take notice and try to use what you've done right. And then um, what you got wrong or they see as a um, room for as a place for room for improvement, they're going to make changes there. OK, um, that is it's true of Go, it's true of C++, it's true of Java, it's true of C, just about any language, just borrow from each other. All right. So let's jump in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up my code editor in our Hello World directory, essentially. And that's going to give me access to all the sections that we've covered. And I'm going to start with section two. That's what we're doing now and um, create directories for C++ and Java. And like I said, we're going to start with our C++ code. So copy that to the C++ directory and just start looking at it there. And one of the things we can do is we can see that this is what it looked like when we compare it to C. And now we want to change it a little bit more. So our requirement in this section is that our C++ code must use a class. As you can see from this example, there's nothing of a class in sight. It's simply a main function that has a statement that prints out hello world. All right, so let's create a class. We're going to create this call, class called hello. And this is how you create a class in C++. You must end with a semicolon. And then we're going to put a function a method. So when you put a function inside of a class, it's called a method. And so now we have a method called say hello in our C++ class. Our class starts on line four and goes to 11. And then our method is from like seven to 10. Um, most of it is formatting, but our method still only has one statement, which is what we move from the main program function into the class. So if you can imagine that a class is just this encapsulation of methods and data members and um, methods. Methods are the thing that do the operations and data members are all onto data, but we don't have any data member here. And so now what we're going to do is say, how do I access a method that's inside of a class? Well, we need to have either the class or an object that was created from the class or an instance, you know, so I'm use object and instance interchangeably. And now we want to be able to call the say hello method on the hello class. So I can say like auto equals new blah, blah, blah. This is essentially equivalent to how we do it in um, Go, but it doesn't quite work because it says I created a pointer. So I'm going to just go ahead and create an instant here um, without new. I know I'm going to call the hello, but then when I try to run it, I get errors such as, you know, say hello is private. I implicitly and I could make it explicit. But if I make it public, we can see that it actually worked. And so I change it and I explicitly say that say hello method is public. And then I could run my code and there it works. So um, this is now one way you can write a hello program in C++ using classes. I define a class and I put a method inside of it. I say the method is public, meaning that you can access it from outside once you have an instance of it. And so I create an instance on line 16. And that instance is being referenced by the variable h. And then now I can say h that hello world. Now let's go to Java. And what I'm going to do is I'll start by copying the C++ program and pasting it into my Java directory. But I'm going to change the extension from C++ to Java. 
But because of some requirement in Java, I also have to change not only the extension, but also the file name to call it hello. Why? Because I have a class called hello. Well, more than that, it's because I'm going to eventually have a public class called hello. But really, if you're going to have a class in a C Java file uh, with a certain name, well, it sort of have to have the file name has to mirror it. You could have multiple classes in that file, but they can be public. So a lot of rules and we're not trying to learn Java per se. So let's just skip it and say, oh, I need this file to be called hello.java and I have a class there called hello. And so I need these two things to be the same. Now, Java, you can use packages, but for now, um, there's a default package if I don't specify one. So I'm gonna go with that. Java doesn't use the public colon like in C++, so we can get rid of that for now. And it doesn't have C out, so we can do call the system class that that out um, variable side of it being exposed in that class, and then on that object, I'm gonna call print line. Java requires that everything be in part of a class. So our main function there on line 12, that's not part of a class. So we need to move it into this class that we have. And so we're gonna highlight it, move it into our hello class, and reformat it. And then if we try to run this, Java, when we try to run this, it tells us, well, um, H might not have been initialized. That's because you can create an instance in Java of a class by simply just saying, you know, hello H like we did in C++. This in Java, what Java did after it came after C++ is they tried to clean up all this pointer arithmetic and all this other crazy stuff. And so what you do is you create a reference. They don't call it a pointer, they call it a reference. So H there is a reference to some object that um, is going to be from created from the LO class template, but we haven't created it yet. So that's why it's saying H hasn't been initialized and you can essentially think of H as being null. So we're going to go now and we're going to say create a new hello world object and assign it to this H reference. But notice we still don't have to do any kind of stranger point or arithmetic. We're going to be able to run it. Well, it's telling us that how it expect a main function to have a specific signature, not like what we have here. And so we're going to go back now and make sure that our, our main function look exactly like this. Um, again, the reason why is because Java went in and said everything is an object. So when we had our hello class, we had to move our main function into this hello class. But now how is it going to find it to run it if you give it a class? Well, it needs to have very specific rules about where's the entry point and needs to look like this public static void main and it takes a string. And then if you give it a class with a method like that, it knows, well, OK, I can start by running this main method for this class. And so all your classes can have a main method. They don't stop you from having that. But the one that you specify is where it's going to start running. So anyway, we have this. So now let's try and run our code and see what's going to happen and it does work now well what about if we try and compare our c and c plus plus so we're going to select the main that cpp for comparison and the java file and not c and c plus plus java and c plus plus and you could see here um syntactically there's there's some differences but you could kind of see where they're very very similar right you know who are lying four in the C++ and line three for Java, both says class hello. Um, and, you know, sure, in C++, methods default to being private, um, either um, is implicitly private if you don't specify, but you have to say something is public. In Java, it seems that some things are public. It's not quite exactly the case. Um, it's package level, but we're not going to get into all of that right now. But anyway, still, it looks very similar. Um, but we can go back and in our Java program, we can then say, well, let's get rid of call it, actually creating an instance before we call the method. And what about if we try to call the method directly? We can still make things simpler by saying that I have a hello method on this class that I'm gonna call. But remember, since everything is a class in Java, uh, for the same exact reason that you need to be able to get to that function and make it static to say, well, okay, I can call main without getting an instance first. 
Well, that's what we're going to do. When we put static on a method in Java, we're saying, oh, this thing can be used without having an instance of the class. And so that's why we can just say class that and method name. And this come in handy for a number of reasons that we're not going to get into right now. But just know that we don't have to first create an instance. We can just call it. And we can do the exact same thing in C++. And this colon colon that we've, we see used on line 11 with the std colon colon out, the colon colon is called a scope resolution operator in C++. It's exactly that. It resolves the scope. That C out is in the std scope or namespace. Whereas when we do it on line 16 for C++, it's saying that hello world, it is in the scope of this class, hello. Um, but notice also on line 8 in the C++ code, we have to say that oh, this is also a static method in this class, meaning that you can run this call this method without first saying that oh, you have an object to this class. And now it allows us to simplify our code a little bit, but notice again the similarity between these two languages. They have the same idea of this static method and so on. And how do you get to things that may not require having an instance um, before you can use it? And you could think of like having a math class where you have things like power and exponent and all these other operations. You don't necessarily want to create an instance every time you want to call those methods. So that's where it comes in. Now, when you compile your C program, you actually have a runnable application. Now we can see that here by doing file on the main that's generated or compiled um, for us. We can see it's actually an executable. I tell us a Mac OS 64 um, bit executable. If we were to run the same you know, file command on the class um, file that was created, you know, that hello.class file, we'll see it it's not an executable. It says it's a compiled Java class. And this is another place where Java is very different. Java is compiled to an intermediate language, which is um, for a virtual machine. This is called the Java Virtual Machine or the JVM. And one thing that was popular in Java when they first came out is that they said compile one once and run everywhere. And the idea there was, you know what, if you write your code and then compile it, and since you're going to get this intermediate that classes or that class files, um, you can just run those anywhere there's a JVM. So if I give you this now, hello, that class file, and you have a JVM on your mobile phone, you have a JVM on your server, your desktop, wherever you have a JVM, a Java virtual machine, because it's a virtual machine, it's an application that presents this virtual machine, it acts like a layer between um, your application and the actual machine, it would execute this hello that class file and it will work. And again, for the most part, compile once and run anywhere pretty much work, you know, 90 something percent of the time. It's just like C and C++ are supposed to be um, portable and they pretty much work most of the time, but there are always these differences that make it doesn't work. Now, true portable languages would be like your scripting languages or, you know, like Python and those guys. And I think Go is comes pretty close for a system programming language because usually um, the more low level a language is, it's sort of harder to make it um, portable, um, truly cross-platform and portable. Um, but there it is, um, Java with compiling to intermediate um, set of representation, not for a specific machine. So that hello, that class file doesn't have anything specific about 64-bit or 32-bit machine or OS um, type of OS. It does have some information about a JVM version um, that it should run on, but that's beyond the scope of what we're doing here. Now, in terms of being able to run your program, again, we were able to run it before without putting it in a package, but if we put in a package Java, we get an error because that package is reserved. If I put it in a package demo, again, the way Java and Go uses packages, you know, you tend to have a directory name that goes along with a package directory. And so um, I can still run my program by compiling it on a command line and saying you're using the Java C compiler with Java C um, for Java compiler. And that compiles me and give me a hello that class file. And now I can then run it using the Java command. And but I have to specify the class path. Again, class path has to be where the set of directories 
or jar files, which we're not going to really talk about here, where I can go find the class that I want to run. And the class I want to run is hello. I don't need to specify that class because I'm only allowed to run classes anyway. So why specify that class? My that Java file is what I compile and get at that class. So I don't need to specify that. Now, things get a little bit more tricky if I go up one directory. Now, when I say Java compile and then say Java, it notice how it uses my demo directory as like a pad to work to get into the class. And that's like the package it's using and that works. But if I go up one more and I try to do the same thing, it recognizes that oh, there's a hello class in demo, which is inside of Java. I put a dot to recommend represent the directory, but it's treating it now as a package. And when I try to run that, because it includes Java in the package path now, it doesn't want to run it because again, Java is prohibited. It's sort of like how in Go, if you try to add something to a package that you don't belong to, well, you can't. Here, they don't want you to ever use the Java package name because that package name has been reserved for the language itself and the features that they're going to put in the language. Again, a lot more we can say here about the two languages. We're not trying to really learn C or C++, um, C++ or Java or any of the languages that we can compare, but we're just trying to get an idea of how they differ and you know, in what ways they're similar. And when we look at the two languages, we can see a lot of similarities. And you might even say some of those similarities, um, you know, are, you know, just syntactic things that you can probably put in one language or the other one to make them exactly the same. Or you might even be able to write some code that take a simple program and convert one to the other. But I guarantee you the differences are more than just skin deep, you know, more than just how you see the syntax being very different. They take very, very different approaches to a lot of things. And one that we can see is package. The other one we can see is when you compile a C++ program, you get an executable. Can you get something more intermediate? Yes, you can get an object file or whatever in C and C++, but that still is going to belong to that particular platform, um, platform being which OS and architecture you use. Whereas with Java, when you compile Java source code, you get a class and that intermediate class is compiled for a virtualized machine. And that's where it runs. That's also where you get a slight performance hit because when your code run, it almost gets interpreted, but Java is still faster than an interpreted language. These things are going to get very confusing, you know, like Python is an interpreted language. And so Java is faster because there's some other tricks you can do once you like just in time compiling and all this other thing, but it's still never going to be as fast as C++ or even as fast as C. Even when it comes to C and C++, C just beat the pants off of most things in terms of speed. I mean, to get faster, you pretty much have to program it in assembly language. And as much as people hate C because it's so detailed and error prone, if you do not know what you're doing, very few people really want to go program in assembly language. Um, unless they really have to. And for the same reason, um, people when they want performance, it's they look at, you know, if I'm programming Java or Python or anything, any of those languages really, and they want something to be really fast, they start thinking, oh, can I write it in C? Or which part of it can I write in C? They don't really want to write the whole thing in C, but which part can I write in C? It's just because of the performance you get. But anyway, anyway, um, this is enough for talking about these two languages and um, see you in the next video. Thanks for your time. Um, follow me on Twitter, Instagram at, for Twitter is Traversity1, Instagram is Traversity, and take care. Have a great day. Bye.